more. Well, okay, let's get started. And um, good morning to the second day of the uh, Linux Foundation's Collaboration Summit. This here is the, uh, the automotive um, track. And um, I'm Rudy Strife. I'm the Director of Embedded Solutions for the Linux Foundation. And I'm also leading the Linux Foundation's Automotive Grade Linux Collaboration Project. And uh, I'm going to give an overview of the well, State of the Union, um, where we stand with Automotive Grade Linux. Automotive Grade Linux is one of the Linux Foundation's collaboration projects. We have um, quite a few of those. And the idea of these projects is really bring um, interested parties together and um, collaborate on um, common um, issues uh, or common features, projects, and move um, the adoption of Linux forward. So we started Automotive Grade Linux last year in September. We launched it at the Automotive Linux Summit in Gaden in the UK. And at launch, this was our membership. We had our inaugural steering committee meeting um, there with um, 16 companies who were interested in joining Automotive Grade Linux, become a member of the steering committee, and um, drive the, um, the adoption of Linux in the automotive um, industry. Today, we have added quite a few more members. Now we're about um, 26. And it's really every month or so, we're adding two, maybe three um, more members um, to it. And it's a, it's a broad range of companies from the automotive industry, uh, OEMs, uh, tier ones, as, as well as from uh, semiconductor industry and telecommunications and um, information technology industries. And um, the thought really of automotive grade Linux is not just for systems inside of a car, but of course everyone is talking about the connected car, connecting the car to the cloud. Um, that also includes um, a lot of um, cloud services and technology that is necessary um, to make this happen. And um, so the, the vision of automotive grade Linux is not just having um, systems in the car, but also extend um, to infrastructure. Our mission here is will really enable the automotive industry to successfully utilize Linux and open source technologies for product development uh, with an open collaboration on items that everyone really needs to be able to successfully um, develop or to deploy products inside of a car. Um, collaborate on uh, the non-differentiating items, uh, drive um, forward. Um, some of the technologies, future technologies that are interesting for, um, for the automotive um, industry. And that can be what um, um, Ethernet, AVB to network um, systems inside of a car, can be a vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure communication stacks, and uh, many other things. And we'll also really provide um, processes um, to, to do so, a reference software and hardware that um, gets engineers of the industry um, easily started. And if you have been to uh, Matt Jones's keynote um, yesterday morning, he was talking about this <coughs> survey that um, Geneva actually conducted looking for what, uh, what are people looking for um, when, or what, what is their major problem, essentially, when they're trying to adopt um, Linux and open source. And one of the major problems is really there is nothing you can go to. There is no distribution, so to say. For, um, for automotive or even for embedded Linux. If you want to use some um, Linux and open source on, on a PC, well, then you have a broad choice of distributions. You go to, you download it within um, 20 minutes or half an hour, um, you're up and running. And this is also one of the, and so it's one of the goals really also of um, automotive grid Linux to be such an enabler to um, provide these um, distributions and other things. Um, and also complement that um, with education and best practices on um, open source. So these are kind of the, the major staples, um, so to say, of the deliverables uh, of automotive grade Linux. I reference hardware and software. Uh, we don't build um, the hardware. Well, we just um, select the hardware. Although um, one of the uh, membership companies of automotive grade Linux um, did build um, a hardware that has some um, typical automotive um, components um, on there. Um, they did that um, in, um, uh, it was commissioned by Toyota. 
and um, and it's a hardware that actually um, provides um, Intel or x86 architecture as well as um, ARM-based um, architecture. So systems with different CPU platforms. Uh, so we have um, reference hardware that are Intel-based as well as the ports um, going on now to ARM-based hardware, um, such as the, um, the Panda board and also Freescale IMX 6-based um, um, platform. The um, demonstrator we'll be talking about um, runs on a Nexcom hardware that uses an Intel Sandy Bridge um, chipset. Really, the idea is also to have a download, really be able to download and software and go, you know, put it on the hardware and run with it and make it really that you 20 minutes from downloading, you image your system, and then you have a system up and running. And um, uh, we've been working um, intensively on that uh, during the last couple of weeks. And uh, the first product of that is that um, demonstrator um, that we will be showing in detail um, later. Another um, important part, of course, is processes and tools. So OK, um, you have an image, a distribution that you download, you put it on your system but you don't necessarily know how, how to build it. And it's not like that there's not one size fits it all. Once you want to go into an embedded system into automotive deployment, you need to be able to build your system essentially from scratch. And you also need to be able to modify and customize your system so that it fits your particular needs as well as your um, particular um, hardware. So uh, one focus of automotive grade Linux is also build systems. Um, of course, um, collaboration, source code management, um, eventually automotic, uh, automatic um, testing, QA, and also establish um, some um, best practices. Uh, one thing is with the industry is, uh, like any industries, um, there's quite a learning curve in how to get involved with open source software. And it's kind of really a three-step process. The first step is really you use open source software, you use Linux, and um, you utilize it, you build something, something with it. And then the next step would be eventually um, you want to be able to, um, to directly collaborate in those open source projects. Because in the course of your development, your ad, um, adoption, um, you have maybe made some changes um, to the source code of some of the projects to um, better fit your needs. And you think, oh, yeah, well, eventually what I did there is actually also very useful for other um, people who want to contribute back, which is kind of the next level. Um, working in open source projects and contributing back to that um, project and also um, make sure that um, what you have written um, or what you have um, provided um, is of, of the benefits for others. And it's also of a benefit um, for, for yourself um, because um, once you have submitted um, something to an upstream project or so, then um, part of the maintenance actually um, is done inside of that um, upstream project too. And then the third step, of course, is if you say, well, I have um, a very specific need. I have an open source project, and, or I have a project, but it's not really covered by any other um, open source project. So I want to launch my own open source project. And I want to create um, a community around it. And this is also what um, um, has happened. One example, well, you have heard it yesterday, is about the Open Mama project, um, which is another open, uh, Linux Foundation open source um, collaboration project where the New York Stock Exchange um, technology company went out and said, well, we created this um, software, but it's um, for the broader benefit of, of many, and we want to open source it, and um, we want to basically enable a community around it. Next thing is certainly um, also education. Um, I talked about this right now with the collaboration of contributing to open source project, but also around um, open source licensing and compliance. Of course, um, open source has a lot of different um, licenses. And you need to stay compliant with these licenses. Um, eventually, you are also sourcing from suppliers. You need to do um, supply chain uh, management. And there are, of course, other talks. Um, today, later on, uh, we will have a very interesting panel discussion about um, open source licensing. And there's also uh, presentations here today about the SPDX um, license exchange format and others. All right. What is the idea or the concept really behind um, automotive grade Linux? It is really about um, really being um, developer oriented, rapid prototyping, and jump starting um, engineering. Um, that's why we also call our reference distribution um, 
or commonly dub it or name it, the Fedora of, or Debian of automotive um, Linux. And if you're familiar with Linux uh, distributions, you know that um, Debian and Fedora are these um, are cutting edge developer um, distributions. They put the latest um, Linux and open source technologies in there. They integrate it. <coughs> and um, it's, it's really a good way for, for developers and engineers to experience some um, of the latest and, and greatest technologies um, around um, Linux and open source. And the Automotive Grid Linux a reference distribution seeks to do um, exactly that. So we want to integrate um, latest and greatest technologies um, that are relevant um, to the automotive um, industry. And uh, put this all together in a package so that um, developers can um, easily get started with it. And that comes, of course, with these, these images, with um, source code um, downloads, as well as some um, documentation um, to do that. Upstream focused, um, the idea is never ever to reinvent really the wheel if there is an upstream um, project available. And um, it provides uh, and, 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 have, and it has a lot of, lot of it provides the necessary features or so. But um, there may be enhancements or so than um, Automotive Grid Linux and the companies and um, contributors working with it um, would make um, contributions to those um, upstream projects. Um, then also, of course, eventually provide um, upstream projects um, like really our um, user um, interface or so, our HTML5 frame, framework that could be an, an upstream project and, and, and others as well as um, serve as an up, upstream project um, itself so that um, others can use excuse me, <coughs> what um, automotive grade Linux is. Um, um, is, is putting together, such as the reference distribution. The reference distribution, of course, is not meant to be um, production ready, but, and, um, and, but um, people can use it and um, kind of derive um, production ready um, production systems um, from it. Of course, automotive focused, uh, all the core components um, that need the needs of the automotive industry, putting um, things in there, um, developing that could be new features or can just be kind of optimization things um, such as, okay, how do you do a fast boot with Linux so that you can show real-time images from cameras connected to the system uh, within two to three seconds um, from startup, which is what you want to have for backup cameras and surround you with your cameras when you're driving your car out of a parking spot. Other things are, um, <coughs> excuse me, like how do you lay out a file system um, correctly for an embedded device that has to live in a vehicle for maybe um, 10 years or eventually longer so, so that you do not wear out your um, solid state um, devices. So how do you um, optimize and put, uh, put um, things into read-only sections so that you don't, or you, um, your log files or um, many Linux components or uh, frequently write temporary files um, to disk, how do you do this? Uh, without really wearing out the file system, or maybe you don't have to um, really directly write to the SSD, but you have a, um, an overlay, so sort of a RAM disk or something like that to do that. It's really also really about um, addressing and close um, those technology gaps. Okay. This is structure, um, how it looks. So um, the project is hosted by the Linux Foundation. <coughs> Our Linux Foundation provides the infrastructure. Um, for it, like we do it with many of these um, collaboration projects um, that we have. Um, Linux Foundation, of course, is, is a neutral um, body. We don't have a stake in it, but um, we, we do provide these services um, to companies who are interested. And so AGL is one of these um, Linux Foundation collaboration projects. The work group is uh, structured in um, a steering committee. A steering committee, these are um, corporate members um, companies who have a stake in automotive grade Linux who, who want to um, actively drive um, the development, set the directions. Um, there's a steering committee coordinator. Um, that's what I'm doing um, right now. And then we have a set of expert groups that address um, certain domains and, and focus on those. And we'll go into expert groups in a little bit. And then there can be um, contributors and resources um, from uh, many different areas. Well, thank you. Uh, for open source community, of course, uh, companies, academias, 
individual um, contributors. Everyone really interested in, in driving adoption of Linux and open source forward in, in the automotive industry, or interested just in, in, in um, playing around with it. And that's one of the things um, that, that we enable from playing around. A lot of new interesting things can be derived and um, come up. Steering committee members, these are the AGL um, stakeholders, the companies who have a vested interest in it. They provide their expertise, guidance uh, to advance HEL's um, missions, goals. They lead um, the expert groups, and um, they contribute really actively to HEL um, with resources, uh, requirements, specifications, implementation, test, and um, documentation. While code and open source projects is always kind of at the center, um, of course, um, there's a lot of um, different things that can be done and can be um, contributed. And if somebody just um, downloads um, the image and puts it on a system, maybe on a different system, and says, well, I tried this image on a, on a different piece of hardware, and um, this worked and that worked, um, that's some um, really valuable feedback, and it's a valuable, uh, a valuable uh, contribution. And of course, if that's all documented, that um, helps uh, moving the cause um, forward. Come on in, please. <laughs> The expert groups, they focus on a specific domain. They really actively drive like technical or organizational area within the project. They have their domains of focus. And they're led and run by a lead, or one or multiple leads. And they are um, individuals um, who are typically employees of the steering committee members. And it's really a dedicated leadership. And um, everything requires leadership in, in some form to move things um, forward. Um, the expert group, they really understand the industry goals, requirements um, for their domain. They seek the input and um, form a vision where the expert group, where they want to be, um, what they want to um, accomplish. And um, one of these expert groups is our reference um, distribution. And we have a certain set of goals that we want to achieve, such as, well, you should be able to use this reference distribution within 20 minutes from downloading. Uh, eventually, you should be able to build the entire reference distribution from source code from scratch to an image um, yourself and, um, and other things. They also have a good understanding of the current reality, um, the status of Linux in respect to the industry requirements, what is required, what is needed, um, and how can we close the gap? How can we get there? Where are we? And um, what do we need? And um, also then identify the stakeholders. Who do we need? Um, to make um, things happen. And that can be um, people, organizations um, from the industry, as well as um, from the open source um, community, saying, OK, we have, maybe there is, an, for an example, there is a Bluetooth um, profile that may not be um, implemented yet in the standard open source Linux Bluetooth stack, which is BlueC. So how um, can we work with the maintainers of the BlueC project to um, eventually close that? Um, close that gap, or maybe some other things um, that, that are related um, to the kernel. And this is also where the um, Linux Foundation can um, provide um, valuable resources to the entire thing um, because of our connections, of course, to the community and kernel community and many other communities. And then, of course, have a plan. How can we involve those stakeholders? Um, how can we close the gaps? And um, how can we get there where we want to be? And of course, execute that plan and um, and work in action. So we had a automotive great Linux steering committee had a meeting during the um, Linux Con and Embedded Linux conference in Barcelona last week, and we launched a whole, whole set of expert groups for that: reference distribution, hardware, multimedia, over-the-air updates, um, and so on. Um, that's what we thought is a, was a good idea. So we set up all this um, structure, but now we really can need to um, fill also everything um, with life. Automotive Linux is um, still a pretty um, new project. And um, really, in, um, the most progress really made in terms of the, um, the reference distribution and, and the enablement um, 
in particular also with that um, demonstrated project um, that we just um, did within the last um, couple of weeks. And um, we're, of course, hoping to involve more and more people and more and more companies into those um, expert groups and say, okay, yes, we want to take a lead here. Uh, we want to do um, something there. And um, yeah, we will have a new expert group pretty soon also about um, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure um, communication and open source um, software stack. Um, that Componentality, a company is also active in um, automotive grade Linux, um, will be um, open sourcing and um, inviting um, people to contribute um, to it and collaborate it and really to also to try it out and see um, how it works and how can we um, make it better. Automotive grade Linux is really about action and um, getting things done. It's not really that much about um, standardization. Um, standards don't really work if you kind of sit on a, at a table and, and, and try to dream up, um, oh, let's, let's, let's create a new standard and everybody's going to like it. Um, that, it doesn't work that way. It never worked that way. Um, standards evolve eventually, and, um, and, and it's really things evolve um, through action, um, getting something done. Ethernet um, evolved, somebody developed something, and um, it was made available. People used it, people improved on it, and eventually um, it was, was more formalized, and, um, and, and, standardized, and standards were set. Um, automotive grade Linux is also not about... Um, about compliance or so. There is no such thing as automotive grade um, Linux um, compliance. The reference distribution is not meant to be um, a, the, the blueprint of, of, a, um, uh, of a compliance specification or so uh, because it doesn't really make um, that much uh, sense either in, in, in this setting or so. Um, everybody has um, different requirements. Um, there are all, uh, has different requirements and different ways to integrate things. Um, you build a different head unit uh, company A or um, OEM A builds a different head unit than OEM B, and then they also have um, different hardware. They need to um, adapt their things. They want to have a different um, feature set, and they want to modify it. And the, the reference distribution is really only it's a superset um, of a lot of um, different technologies, and may or, you may not need all of those technologies, so you can um, remove and, and customize it. So it's not like that you have to use um, what HEL produces. It. It's just really something that um, enables you and gets you started. So what have we been doing elsewise? Um, HEL webinars. Um, we launched a webinar series. We have this really every month. And we had one in February. Matt Jones presented on the Jaguar Land Rover's experience in moving to Linux-based um, IVI systems. And in March, uh, Mick Whelan and Osama Othman from Intel um, were presenting on leveraging the Tizen IVI build for infrastructure, how to build um, packages and software with, um, for um, Tizen IVI. And now upcoming in um, April, we will have um, Constantine Kite from Complementality talking about um, open source um, solutions for vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to um, well, vehicle, -to -vehicle um, communications. And um, yeah, that's also an invitation. Um, if um, anybody wants to present, has something interesting um, to present, or wants to present uh, a webinar about um, uh, technologies related or relevant for automotive and um, open source, um, we are, uh, yeah, uh, we invite those. Yes. If I missed the webinar, can I, can I download them somewhere? Yes, that's actually a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, we have this also always on the HL um, website. Um, there are the registrations for those um, webinars. You can sign, sign up for them. And if you have missed those, you can always you can download those. And you can download the, um, the presentation slides itself, as well as the um, entire um, video and, um, and audio feed uh, from the webinar. So you can always come back and, and look at it and, um, and ref. Um, All right, so we're doing also a couple of promotions um, here and there. Um, in the media, um, we had um, Doug Newcomb from um, Wired um, had a nice um, article um, in which um, automotive grade Linux was represented. Linux drives um, the open source car. Jim Semlin, also in Wired, had an opinion um, page. The next battleground for open source is your car. And then Doug also um, did I did an interview with Doug Newcomb on automotive grade Linux more in details, and he wrote an article again for Wired can open source solve car um, tech problems. 
and of course we strongly believe so. And other things are events. Um, I've been representing events. Uh, I've been representing Automotive Get Linux a couple of times. I'm doing events. Uh, first time there was telematics at Chang, uh, China in 2012. That was December 2012 in Shanghai. So we talked about um, Automotive Get Linux and what it's doing and why it makes um, sense. And um, there will be another event coming up, um, content and apps for automotive in Europe on 2013 in June. And we'll have another one on a connected cars in 2013, also in June in Amsterdam, where, where I'll be representing and talking about um, automotive Great Linux. Um, projects, so how have the projects been doing? Um, demonstrate a project that um, has been or is visible um, here uh, today in vehicle, IVI, uh, vehicle demonstration, um, the uh, Land Rover LR4 in the, um, in the breezeway down there, uh, Valet parking area. And this actually has been really a collaboration project between um, HEL companies, Foil Lab, Symbio, Symphony, Teleca. And as Matt also yesterday said, we, um, we put this together in a very um, short time frame just to see um, how, what, what can be done actually. What can be done if you really throw everything um, overboard um, of typical waterfall type of development and just embrace some um, open source or kind of um, rapid scrum type of um, development and, um, and see what you can do in three weeks and how it works out. And uh, we think it worked out um, pretty well. And it, it's really an excellent starting point for the automotive grid Linux some reference distribution on to which we want to build on to more and more. So what we did, what we did we really do? Uh, we integrated the system even with the uh, with the CAN bus, CAN controls. So we mocked around with the um, Linux CAN drivers and everything, tried to get that run on the kernel and load into the kernel and so on, and then um, send out messages, CAN frames to the CAN bus. We added a media player and controls for the um, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and it actually can control through the CAN bus um, the fan and the temperature um, in the car. And then we said, OK, we'll take it also a step further. Um, can we add some remote control um, functionality um, to this? So you can log into a website or eventually can use your mobile phone and um, yeah, change settings in your car and do things. So, and for that, we also built up cloud server in the Linux Foundation's um, cloud um, that um, enables that functionality. And that cloud server and all this functionality will actually also be available to um, collaborators um, to do um, uh, similar things. And the way how it just works, of course, it's secure. You have your own um, logins and things like that, so you don't control somebody else's car or so or systems. And those downloads and will be available on um, automotive.linuxfoundation.org and the HEL demonstrator. So together with this, we also have this um, now user experience um, contest. We said, OK, so we did something in um, three weeks. and we said, OK, let's find people out there who can do maybe much, much more than we could do in, uh, in, in uh, that we could do in three weeks, maybe in a, <coughs> in a, in a um, rather short time frame, sorry. And enhance and improve on this some even more. Or just use the entire framework and say, OK, well, I use the framework, but I throw away all the skins and the GUIs and everything, and I design my completely um, new thing. <coughs> And that's what we're out for. We're looking for, so what can you really do um, with, this, with this enabler? Um, because going back to our mission, we wanted to enable this collaboration and say, OK, um, now we put something together. It's not perfect. Um, but take it and run with it and really um, go out and show um, what, what can be done with this. And um, so we created a couple of user uh, uh, categories for that, best user experience, best visual exp um, appearance, best new concept or additional um, feature. And there will be some prizes for that, of course. Um, we'll have one winner and two runners up for each category. And everybody will receive a, a tablet PC. And the winners will also have the opportunity to work with AGL and Jaguar Land Rover on the proof of concept and, and really get what they have designed um, into this um, en entire thing. And well, last but not least, um, you get um, recognition. And um, that works for individuals as well. It works um, really for, for companies too. Um, for software engineers, software developers, open source is really a great way 
to build up your reputation. It's almost like a, a publicly visible resume, but not, not just the resume saying, I did this and I did that, but here is also the proof. This is what I did because I collaborated in, in these projects or did this and that. And of course, for, for companies, a collaboration in something like um, um, automotive grade Linux is, is really a way to, um, to, to, to directly show um, expertise and show technology um, that the companies um, have and have developed and, um, and showcase that. Um, there's terms and conditions at, uh, at this website. And of course, there is a time frame to it. So um, really, the contest started yesterday and it will and um, at the um, Automotive Linux Summit in Tokyo, in Japan. Well, actually, a little bit before that, because we need some time to review everything and, um, and find the winners and runners. up. So really, what's next? Around the HL demonstrator reference distribution. Um, Matt already also mentioned that yesterday. Integrate open source navigation, um, Navit, um, into it. Integrate Bluetooth um, telephony automotive message broker to kind of um, have an abstraction layer um, essentially from the middleware or, or from the user interface um, to the vehicle interfaces so that it makes it easily portable um, from one car to a different um, car. Um, web API for vehicle sensors and controls. Um, that's meant to be a, a broad um, superset. Really, ideally, uh, we go out and um, get really input um, from, uh, from from all different OEMs and, and car, really car makes and models and see, okay, what sensors are in there and provide um, uh, uh, standard infra interfaces to read those, those sensors as well as standardized interfaces to, um, to, to issue commands or to take control. And um, this is supposed to be or will be aligned with the W3C Automotive Web Platform Business Group. Um, I talked to representatives, representatives of that um, business group um, last week. And um, well, coincidentally or not, um, this business group actually will have a meeting also um, during the Automotive Linux uh, Summit in, uh, in Tokyo, in, in Japan. So I want to um, bring this um, together and also really provide um, HEL's input um, to, this, um, to that business group. Another thing is really um, a source code and build system. Really an image um, gets you quite a way there, uh, so you can work with it and play with it, but eventually you need to be able to build it yourself and build it from scratch. So we want to have um, system builds from source code all the way uh, to, to the image and um, use a build system for that. And really what else, you know, um, you name it, and um, this afternoon we'll have an open steering committee meeting in which we can discuss other topics and things um, that people are interested in and um, would like to address uh, in, in in the framework of um, automotive grade Linux. Okay, a couple of upcoming events. Um, talked about the webinar already on um, using open source uh, solutions for um, vehicle infrastructure, vehicle to vehicle um, communication. Uh, that's presented by Constant Kite for Continentality. Uh, Thursday, April 24th, uh, oh, sorry, 25th. We always do two webinars um, to accommodate um, the different time zones around the globe. And um, we have one for Europe um, that will be at 8 a.m. Um, Central European summer time there. It's 4 p.m. Um, Japan, Japanese um, standard time. And for, well, for the U.S., uh, for me, unfortunately, it will be at midnight. So. And then we'll have one, another one for the U.S. Um, at um, 6 p.m. Uh, European standard time, and that will be the 9 a.m. Pacific time. Registration will be available um, shortly on automotive.linuxfoundation.org slash webinars, so you can sign up for it there. And then, of course, um, we'll have the Automotive um, Linux Summit 2013 in spring. It's a two-day event, May 27 and May 28. It's co-located with um, LinuxCon Japan, and we have a great lineup of um, speakers already and um, good keynotes and about um, 34 or 35 um, breakout sessions. Uh, the program will be published um, this week on our website, too. And um, what else? Yeah, there also will be an hands-on lab on, on build system on the Tizen IVI build system, too, if you're interested in that. And yeah, thank you so much. And um, your questions.